Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Now, I'm not the biggest sportsman on the planet, in fact I'll go so far as to say I'm not a sportsman, but I do value sportsmanship. When I hear that people have, oh, I don't know, joked about running out the clock to win games or breaking a gentleman's agreement to gain an unfair advantage, I get rather sour. So from time to time, I have to cleanse the palate with an archetype that embodies the spirit of friendly competition and mutual respect. Ultra Athletes or UA for short. Now, when Duelist Alliance dropped, I was too busy hanging out with Dante and the gang to garner a sense of appreciation for the primetime pummelers. And to be fair, next to themes that have almost infinite recursion, the most bonkers fusion spell to date, and mutating synchro monsters, a couple of baseball players can seem pretty dull. But as time went on and the roster filled, a very interesting toolbox deck began to take shape. With clearly defined offensive and defensive linemen that could effortlessly switch places, you could build a playbook that could handle just about anything your opponent called to the field. And with recent support having been drafted in Phantom Rage, I think it's time to re-examine this veteran team and see if it can grab the MVP award. It's time to go plus ultra with UA. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 5,000 subs and you can help make it happen. And if you haven't already, please make sure to do the same for Rogue Theory. If you know me, then you know I love doing deep dives on specific archetypes and talking about their lore when I can, and Rogue Theory does too. And since we both have our own unique ways of researching and analyzing them, you're bound to get some great info no matter what. Thank you for your patience, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with UAs? Well, they're a series of Earth Attribute Warrior monsters, and they all share a very interesting inherent summoning mechanic. You can special summon them from your hand by returning a UA monster you control to the hand, and you can do this once per turn per copy. The idea is that you'll be putting your offensively minded sports golems onto the field at the beginning of your turn, getting the most out of them in the battle phase, then swapping them out for your defensive oriented ones before you pass to the end phase. Let's go over the lineup, and we'll do so in chronological order to help understand the impact of additions as they're made available. First is Mighty Slugger, a level 5 monster with 2300 attack and 700 defense. If they attack, your opponent can't activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. Not really a lot of nuance here by themselves, they're just a respectably sized armades. But what I love about effects like these is that it can shut off negation long enough to push certain effects through. There's a brief window after attack declaration where you can activate most spell speed 2 effects before damage step shenanigans start to apply, and with Mighty Slugger, you can do so without consequence. But as a slug, make sure to keep the salt levels down, they're a bit sensitive. They were released alongside Perfect Ace, another level 5 with 1500 attack and 2500 defense. Once per turn, during your opponent's turn specifically, when they activate a card or effect, you can discard a card to negate and destroy it. Another really simple but effective card, having an Omni Negate that's a simple 1 for 1 discard is a pretty good answer to just about anything, and it's not a hard once per turn either, so if you can manage to get multiple on field, that's more cards you can potentially stop. Also, and this is just my immature brand of humor, but I always loved how the German translation looked like perfect ass. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done. What tied these two together was UA Stadium, a field spell that searches you a UA monster whenever you normal summon a UA, balancing out the tribute you'd need to normal summon the ones currently available. Also, once per turn, if a UA monster or monsters are special summoned to your field, all monsters you control gain a permanent 500 attack boost. This is a great boon for Mighty Slugger, as it can now swell up to a powerful 2800 attack after a single boost, and if you can keep it on the field after multiple swaps, then it just keeps getting bigger. This would create something of a loop, where if you had the field spell, you could tribute either to get the other, then just tag out between a heinously strong attacker and a powerful pitcher. It's just a shame that the stadium hasn't been as lively in 2020. I hear they fill the stands with promotional lost arts now to fill the void. The next draft for UA happened in the next core set, the New Challengers, and we got an addition that stalwart fans of the theme had been asking for since they came out, football! Oh, and a level 4 UA. Midfielder has 1200 attack and 1000 defense, and as a quick effect you can target a different face-up UA monster you control, return it to the hand, then special summon a UA with a different name from your hand. This new addition made for a much more consistent deck all by itself, as you could trigger the search effect of Stadium without needing to set up the tribute for the level 5s. And since you could return Midfielder to hand to summon what you searched, you could normal summon them again next turn to get a new search. And let's not forget their utility. 
being able to swap UAs during your opponent's turn meant you could activate Stadium's attack boost on their turn, and it also gave you the option to dodge targeted interaction if need be. It's a great midfielder for our mid-range deck. We also got Goalkeeper, a level 6 monster with 1000 attack and 2800 defense. Once per turn, during your opponent's turn as a quick effect, you can target a UA monster you control, and once during that turn, it can be destroyed by battle or card effect. Now, where Midfielder was the next stage in the theme's evolution, Goalkeeper was anything but. Thematically, it does a great job of representing a goalie diving in at the last minute to save the game, but such limited protection wasn't really useful then, and it's almost laughable now. And on top of that, it wasn't even level 5, so it was the first in a long line of UAs to ruin the idea of using Feast of the Wild level 5 as support. Come on! But that's not to say that this set was a net zero, because we also got what is arguably the deck's win condition, UA Power Jersey. This equip spell only fits the rippling muscles of the UAs, and the equipped monster gains a thousand attack and defense, and if they battle an opponent's monster, any battle damage they inflict is double. And if that wasn't enough, if they destroy a monster by battle, the equipped monster gets to attack again. Combined with the attack boosts from Stadium, this can smite an opponent all in one turn. Now, if they wear the jersey up until your standby phase, the equipped monster is banished. Burnout does suck. But you can avoid this by bouncing the monster back to your hand to put it onto the bench. And thankfully, unlike most equipped spells, you can take the jersey with you. If it's sent to the grave specifically because the equipped monster was bounced to the hand, UA Powered Jersey goes back to your hand as well. Meaning you won't have to get a... New jersey? The next set with more UA cards was Secrets of Eternity, and the sport this time around was football, this time of the American variety, and their first representative is the legendary duelist themselves, Playmaker. They're level 8 with 2600 attack and 2000 defense, and whenever another UA monster you control declares an attack, you can have Playmaker lose 800 attack and gift it to that monster, effectively pulling a big quarterback move and passing a little extra power to the monster rushing for the end zone. And two important things to note. One, the stat changes are permanent, so as long as the attacking UA stays on the field, the attack is theirs to keep while Playmaker can reset by going back to the hand, and two, it's not once per turn, meaning you can lead the charge with Playmaker, then pass the ball off to up to three other attackers. However, it only really does anything as part of a team, so they're more of a shot caller than a Playmaker. Blockbacker is a level 7 with 1600 attack and 2700 defense. Once per turn, when your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, you can change their battle position, and if you do, negate their effects. Now, with the way it's worded, and it being the Pendulum era and all, this was a pretty useful out to a giant Pendulum summon if they had some nifty on summon effects, though nothing stopping them from being used as material. And the effect hasn't particularly aged well either, as the position change requirement means it's almost entirely useless against Link monsters. But since they're not the be-all, end-all of competition anymore, just really useful, it's a bit more playable now. And bonus, the negation is permanent. There are some other issues, it can only hit monster effects on field, which is rather limiting, but it's still a good inclusion in small numbers, if only for the fact that it's non-targeting negation that can completely body boss monsters. And I mean that literally, because some of these effects are really, really thematic. I like to imagine Blockbacker sees the new monster hitting the field and dogpiling them, largely taking them out of the game. I'd like to see the opponent make a comeback when you've got the block back. The spell for this cycle is Turnover Tactics, and it's a uh, little extra. It's a quick play spell, and you can only activate it if you control two or more face-up UA monsters, and when you do, you shuffle every monster on the field into their owner's decks. Then, you can summon UAs with different names from your deck, up to the number of monsters you shuffled into your main deck, but they can't attack this turn. Then your opponent does the same thing, though they can attack, and they can pick any monsters they want. Now on the surface, this seems like hot garbage, but I contend that this is one of the most overlooked removal spells in the game, hampered only by the fact that you need two UAs for this to fire. See, it very specifically counts monsters returned to the main deck. It won't count anything like synchros or links or fusions, so when you shuffle the field around, none of them are getting replaced, but your UAs are. Now, granted, one or two summons from your opponent's main can still be enough to get them back in the game, but if they've fired off a bunch of hard once per turns already, it may not matter, whereas your effects are soft once per turns, so you can reset all your negations or interactions. So I'm looking forward to turning over the perception of this particular tactic in the future.
The last set of original run Ultra Athletes arrived in Crossed Souls, and they added basketball into the mix. Dreadnought Dunker is a level 7 with 2500 attack and 1800 defense. They can inflict piercing battle damage, and when they do inflict damage, you can target and destroy a card your opponent controls. Now, if Power Jersey is your win condition, then this is their perfect fit. With piercing, all your attack boosts and damage doubling have a straight shot to your opponent's life points no matter what, and is probably even more effective if they do hide behind a defensive monster. And if you can manage to bait the negate from Dragoon, you can out that too! Well, not by attacking it, I think it's safe to assume it'll be at least 4,000 by the time you have everything equipped. But if their Verte Anaconda is still open, a 3500 attack Dreadnought with double damage is a clean 6,000 points, just enough to reach lethal after only a single activation. And even without the specialized gear, a 2500 attack piercer that destroys cards when it deals battle damage is something your opponent has to answer. They'll Dreadnought doing so. We also have Rival Rebounder, a level 6 with 2200 attack and 2300 defense. If they're normal summoned, or special summoned during your opponent's turn, you can special summon a UA from your hand or grave. This is one of the more interesting support cards for the theme, but doesn't fit quite well at this point in time. You can essentially tribute summon it to get back a UA that you used as tribute fodder, or you can set things up with midfielder to flash it in to get a free monster on your opponent's turn, but it does require you to have a bit of a setup to be used effectively. We'll get back to them in a bit once we have some more support to talk about, so for now, we'll just catch them on the rebound. Now we have the spell for this set, and it's an absolute game changer. UA Signing Deal. It's a normal spell that, when you activate it, you special summon any UA from your deck, but its effects are negated and can't be used as Synchro or Xyz material. Also, you lose 300 life points per level of the UA summoned. Hey, if you want to sign big talent, you gotta pay big bucks. Thankfully, those restrictions are just formalities to keep you from using these players in non-league sanctioned teams, because if you return that UA back to the hand for the summon of another, all those pesky limitations just go away. This is an excellent card that takes some of the pressure off of midfielder for getting your plays off the ground, and even gets you the exact UA you need to fit any situation. You couldn't ask for a better deal than this. And if that wasn't enough, we got a little extra bonus card this set, the Continuous Trap, UA Penalty Box. Once per turn, at the start of the damage step, if a UA battles an opponent's monster, you can banish your opponent's monster until their second end phase after activation, which is just such a dirty move. Like, it essentially puts the referee in your back pocket, giving out red cards to your opponent left and right. I love it. It's also got a nifty grave effect, letting you banish Penalty Box to search any UA spell from your deck. So if you need Stadium for searches, Signing Deal for Field Presence, or Power Jersey to close things out, you just gotta think outside the box. Or rather, remove the box from the game entirely. I'm losing control of this segment. So that was where the deck was for five years. The rest of the Pendulum and Link era passed, with UAs having strong tools to close out games, but no tools to help break boards or help keep their own safe. But now, in Phantom Rage, we may have a couple of cards to help with that. First is Libero Spiker, a new level 4 with 1800 attack and defense. During your opponent's main phase, you can shuffle a level 5 or higher UA monster from your hand into your deck to summon a UA with a different name from your deck, then bounce Libero Spiker to your hand. So, like the sport they're based on, it's basically a volleyball rotation. From what I researched, whenever possession of the serve is changed, the new team has to rotate their players clockwise around the field, and Spiker does basically the same thing. The UA in your hand goes to your deck, a UA comes out of your deck onto the field, and Spiker goes from your field to your hand, completing the cycle. But Haikyuu references aside, Libero Spiker solved some pretty critical issues with the deck. Previously, you were exclusively playing with your hand. It was kind of like your bench. UAs you didn't need would rest there, and then you would swap them out as needed, and that can sometimes be bothersome if you need to stock your hand with more reactive cards. But the significant issue was that if you didn't have a lot of ways to sculpt your hand, and if you didn't open Stadium plus Midfielder or Signing Deal, then you were stuck with what you had. But with Spiker, any UA in your hand turns into any other UA you needed, increasing your flexibility. And, huge bonus, it's another level 4. It also wildly increases the playability of Rival Rebounder. See? Told you we'd get back to him. Rebounder's issue was compounded by the previous one. You needed to have Rebounder ready and in your hand for the right time, but they also needed a lot of setup to be effective. But surprisingly, the volleyball player provides the basketball player with their best layup. You can just summon them out of your deck on your opponent's turn for some quick field presence, and then you can bounce them back to your hand on your turn, becoming an excellent candidate to be shuffled back into your deck for Libero next time you need them. There's certainly a big reason for UA's recent spike in playability. 
Another good candidate for Libero Summon, or just to have in general, is UA Player Manager. They're a level 8 monster with 2000 attack and 2600 defense, and unlike the rest of our cast, the manager doesn't have the same inherent summon ability as their teams. Rather, if you normal or special summon a UA, you can special summon them from your hand, which makes sense they're around to support their players, not take their place in the lineup. And to help, they provide one of two effects. They can either destroy a card on the field, excellent for getting rid of a specific problem card, or if you're trying to shut off your opponent's field, just negate the effect of every non-UA monster on the board. It's a ridiculous way to build a board through an opponent's, or to just pick theirs apart. And if you can manage to hold off the attack boost effect of UA Stadium, you can use it to chain block for player manager to ensure it resolves against common negation like Dragoons or Savage Dragon. And the best part is that they're still name tagged as a UA, so they can be bounced back to the hand to summon another UA once their one off effect is resolved, so they can be used again next turn. So if you can manage your resources correctly, you'll have everything you need to outplay your opponent. And if that wasn't enough, we have a new field spell to add to the mix UA Hyper Stadium, which is also an FA card. Yeah, these next three are all FA cards as well, to connect the universes, I guess. Anyway, when you activate Hyper Stadium, you can add your choice of a UA or FA monster from your deck to your hand, or add a UA Stadium from your grave to your hand, and that's pretty important for its next effect, where you can reveal a field spell in your hand and pay a thousand life points to grant you an additional normal summon of a UA or FA monster this turn. This combos ridiculously well with Standard Stadium, as you can then proceed to play it on top of Hyper Stadium, normal summon a UA, get the search from Standard Stadium, then normal summon again, then search again, because that particular effect of Standard Stadium is not once per turn. It's absolutely outrageous and helps you mobilize your team like never before. But hot dogs are still 8 bucks a pop, condiments extra. Next is the quick play spell, UA Locker Room. When activated, you can target a UA or FA card you control or is in your grave, add it to your hand, then gain 500 life points. Then you can reveal any number of UA and or FA monsters in your hand, then shuffle them into your deck to draw that many cards. This is fine, I guess? It gives you back a UA you might need to get your plays going, and you can mulligan with it, but it's not mandatory, and the life point gain is nice. Though it would have been nicer if it mirrored the kind of life point loss from other cards. Like, imagine if it got you 300 life points per the level of the returned monster to parallel signing deal. But I guess I'll take what I can get. You can also do some cheeky stuff like grabbing a UA off the board to avoid targeting effects like infinite impermanence, but despite all that, I don't know if it deserves space in our deck. We already have Grave Recursion through Rival Rebounder, and if I want to search a spell with Penalty Box, I'm certainly going to grab Ultra Stadium over this if I can help it. There's just not any... well, room for the Locker Room. Our last card is UA Man of the Match, a normal trap you can activate during damage calculation if your UA or FA monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, or when they deal battle damage. On resolution, you can special summon any number of UA and or FA monsters from your hand and or grave in defense position. Now, if this and Locker Room had swapped card types, I'd be advocating for Man of the Match really, really hard. But as it stands, being an unsearchable trap with a payoff that's powerful but too slow to be effective just isn't doing it for me. I might have liked the idea of running in a super control style UA deck with a lot of normal traps, that way you could use Trap Trick to grab it if you didn't need it for anything else, but that would require playing 3 man of the match, so yeah, not a big fan. It's no match for our other options. So that's all the UA cards, but what do we do with them? Well, now that we have new additions like Player Manager and Hyper Stadium, I think we can lean a lot more into a going second strategy, using Player Manager to open the way for Dreadnought plus Power Jersey to OTK, while still having sufficient going first options like Perfect Ace and Blockbacker in case we're made to go first. But what cards can we add to help them out? The best part about playing a deck that has all its win conditions in the main deck is you get to play Pot of Extravagance, or Disparity depending on your disposition. Personally, I'm a fan of the latter, because you need just the right combo piece to make things work, and the rest can take care of itself. But if you just end up drawing into two more high-leveled UAs without their complementary cards, then you're just gonna have to wait in the dugout because you aren't doing anything else. Speaking of shunning the extra deck, Monarch Stormforth is still pretty nifty. Turning any level 5 or 6 UA in your hand into a Kaiju is outstanding removal, but if you want to keep your extra deck, there are other options as well. Mind Control is still sadly at 1, but Crackdown is at 3. While it does suck that it's a trap card, that does mean you can use it as an eruption on your opponent's turn. You can also play, and I hate to say this, Triple Tactics Talent, but only because it's the only other card that steals monsters that's halfway feasible. 
Okay, this last one's a little goofy, but hear me out here. Mythic Water Dragon. You only need an Earth Monster on field to special summon them from your hand, so in the all Earth Monster theme, the barrier to access is pretty low. But why add it in the first place? Well, I feel like I keep going back to the well on this one, but Dengirsu is still a hell of a card. It can keep our board safe from destruction effects, but the main reason is that it's just a clean out to just about anything. Previously, the only level 8 we had was Playmaker, but Player Manager makes for a much more accessible option to pair with Water Dragon so we can gain access to our giant Mech Knight. But if Xyz gimmicks aren't your style, how about... Synchro gimmicks? Using Player Manager as our non-tuner, you can use Hopier Squadron to make Time Lord Progenitor Vorpgate. Being immune to battle and effect destruction just isn't what it used to be, but it does serve as an easy way to clear a board, especially if you can find a way to get Vorpgate off the field before its effect to bring back all the monster it clear triggers. Or if you want to blast everything immediately, we do have a few level 5s you could use to make Black Rose Dragon. Just, you know, make sure you don't chain Hopyard Squadron to anything. Black Rose does miss timing, after all. And that's all I have for UAs. A big thank you goes out once again to Rogue Theory for letting me guess on his channel. It's an honor to stand alongside his informative archive of videos. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.